Hey there. I know you're expecting and hoping for one of the one-on-one -on -one or Nikki podcasts. And if you're tuning in on YouTube, I know that you've already really been disappointed by seeing my face. But I'm back and better than ever. Thank you for joining us on this new and wonderful reinvigorated podcast, which you can catch on YouTube, SoundCloud, and on iTunes. My name's Yvonne, and I will be guiding us through this NPR-style investigation of Turkmenistan from the inside, like a 60 Minutes, but with more drinking. Uh, over there is my other host, Julian. You might, know him. You might oh, love God. him. <laughs> his name is Julian. <laughs> oh God, yes. Yes, this is me. I am Julian. And if you can point out where Turkmenistan is on a map, you're already 10 steps ahead of the game. Let me put it that way. That's definitely true. <laughs> I had to look it up when you told me you were going there, so I understand. Literally um, everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know. Um, but <laughs> I really like what I'm seeing in the background. And of course, Yvonne, you already pointed out, you can get this video on YouTube but you can also get an audio form on SoundCloud and iTunes. Um, and if you'd like to, you can tell us how we're doing on iTunes by writing a review. Uh, that would be very useful. But Yvonne, I think. Yes. I think we need to move on to beginning this podcast. Of course, we start our podcast off every single week by asking each other what we drank last night and uh, what media have we been consuming lately. So thank you, Julian. That's that's a wonderful way to start the podcast. And I'd like everybody to really, really highlight how well we start our podcasts in those reviews. No, uh, so this past <laughs> week I was uh, on a, a brief trip. It was pretty fun. Uh, and because I was away from everything, I didn't really uh, catch too much TV or anything. But I did watch one movie, nice. which is on Netflix. Uh, it was Don't Think Twice, which is the Mike Birbiglia, Ira Glass produced... Um, improv comedy movie. Okay. It's kind of about aging improv comedians and whether you make it or don't make it or trying to get on SNL, which is apparently the goal of every single New York based co uh, improv comic. And uh, <laughs> it was an interesting watch and it was really enhanced by the podcast that you and Nikki did on how to do improv oh, and, yeah. and the ideas of improv. So if you want to mesh those two concepts together, you can go ahead and backtrack to one of those podcasts that I missed because I was lost in Turkmenistan <laughs> and merge it with this movie, which is on Netflix. Good idea. Um, other than that, I've been drinking a lot of different uh, things, mostly based around the Vermont area, but I had some... Uh, some nice uh, vodka espresso, espresso vodka actually, and some maple whiskey, and I tried to make a kind of a concoction over here, which okay. isn't bad, but isn't great. <laughs> maple whiskey. Uh, that sounds all right, obviously. It um, needs a little bit more sweetness and maybe some like nutmeg. I was trying to make like a kind of brandy Alexander type thing. That makes sense to me, anyways. Uh, anyway. How about you? Media yeah. you've consumed? Yvonne, I thought that for once I saw the movie in theaters and you didn't. Um, I thought we were going to try to dissect the movie It, but we can save that for later. Oh, shoot. Yeah, next I time did watch it. it. I did. Oh, you I saw absolutely it. did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I saw it at Alamo Draft House. Um, there you go. It, granted, we, because we got the tickets the day of, uh, we had to, which was that Sunday where we recorded that podcast. Um, we, we had to get the seats all the way to the front row and to the left, which sucked, but, um, at least I got a burger. I don't know. That was fun. Uh, <laughs> and a, a, a nice burger. IPA. Um, but... Nice. How was so, the experience? I, no, I had a good time. It was, it was definitely worth it. Um, I think that you're right. That is the way to see movies from now on. It doesn't matter how much it is. It if you're trying to see a movie that you really want to see, like, say, the next Star Wars, I would definitely try to get into Alamo Draft House. Even though it'll be booked um, from December until next December, 
for the new Star Wars. Um, <laughs> Which is why I'm saying out. we need to start our own Alamo Drafthouse franchise. I yeah. looked into it. We only need a million dollars. All right. I think we're well on our way because we have 19 subscribers on YouTube. And um, all we need is, uh, you know, like 50 million more if we want to start making PewDiePie uh, cash money. But, uh, Yvonne, Yo. I really like that movie. I don't know if you want to talk about it on this podcast, but it's up to you. Let's go into um, it. Let's, let's get into it. Well, I, I just want to preface, uh, outside of that, um, I drank a lot, a lot, a lot of vodka on Friday night, and I don't think I've been that drunk in ages. <laughs> I drank with one of our good college friends, um... And I lost a game of cards, not like poker or anything. We played a game called Ride the Bus. Oh, I yes. Think, yeah, I lost that, Yvonne. And I was... I think everybody loses that game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you win. You, you still lose. Uh, <laughs> um, no, I, I lost pretty hard, so I was not having a good night. Um, but I was drinking the old Ruski Standard, so at least I was getting hydrated. And I drank a lot of coconut water. And I also wanted to point out that Stardew, I mean, aside from Destiny 2, which I'm still playing, obviously, um, Stardew Valley came out on the Nintendo Switch. And I, I know that game came out about a year ago or two years ago on everything else on PC, but um, it just came out on Nintendo Switch, and I just decided to get it. I, I was thinking, oh, have you heard about this game, Stardew Valley? I have heard of it before, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, it's sort of, it's like a 2D pixelated i guess pixel art um farming simulator and mm -hmm. as boring as that sounds this game is fucking crack i cannot stop playing it um oh my I've god i've heard that it's very addicting it's so addicting Yvonne. i if you <laughs> ever get a nintendo i think it's perfect for nintendo switch because <laughs> it it basically you can sit down and play it for five minutes or you can sit down and play it for five hours um but it's Nintendo Switch is perfect for you know the five minute gameplay sort of thing. You're playing it on the go, um, but you're taking console games on the go, so that's really cool. So I think it's perfect for Nintendo Switch, and if you have a Nintendo Switch and the means to get Stardew Valley, definitely get this game. It's worth your money. Um, but aside from that, we both saw the movie It. Yvonne. this is what the people are yes. waiting for. Uh, our deep conversation about the movie it i saw the original i don't know if you saw the original i haven't or and i've book. never read the book either okay well that's fine uh i just saw the original movie when i was the first time i saw it was when i was i think about 10 years old and i have been afraid of clowns ever since i don't know if you know this about me but uh, <laughs> that movie is not only it's two parts so um i guess it's not spoiling anything, I don't think. Oh, let's let's say, should we go into full spoiler mode, or should we not? I, I think, think it's well worth going into full spoiler mode. Okay, let's go. We're, the, the hat's coming off, guys. Full spoiler mode. I will put a, a timestamp for the topic of the show, which we will go into after we spoil it. So I will put that in both the video and the audio portion, so you guys can check that out. But full spoiler mode... There's going to be a second movie. Um, this was chapter is, one, and yeah. they have said that there will be a second movie due to how well this one did commercially. Oh, are you kidding me? This movie killed it in the box office, um, which is I think I think it was it was a good movie. I liked it. I like what they did with uh, this movie. Um, did you you said you didn't see the first one, right? Uh, no, I haven't okay. seen it. Yeah, so the first one. I went back and rewatched it, I think, this summer because, you know, I heard about... I saw the trailer for this new one. I was like, oh, I'm fucking horrified right now. I need to see the movie. And I, I mean, the whole point... I mean, corny... In a corny way, the movie's about facing your fears, right? So, right. Um, <laughs> so I was like, oh, I have to do it. I have to see this movie again. And the, the old one is more comedic, uh, comedic now. Uh, than it was when I was 10 years old, <laughs> as you can imagine, because it was a budget TV movie that was right, four yeah. hours long, because uh, <laughs> there's two parts. Um, and holy, it was still, I was still pretty creeped out 
by uh, I think it was Tim Curry's performance in that movie. Yeah, but it was. um but now Scarsdale, Scarsgard, sorry, what's his Bill name? Bill Scarsgard, yep. Scarsgard. Yeah, he I think did a pretty good job. I think um in terms of his portrayal of it, he was I I caught shades of the Joker. Uh Tim Me uh, too. I caught many shades of that, but maybe that's just because we've come to think every clown character is now uh, that character. But I, I think that's not Heath Ledger's Joker, of course, from The Dark Knight. But I yeah. think everyone I think, tries I think to emulate it's based that on that, that so little successful. twinge of the voice. Yep. Right. Like, uh, we are tonight's entertainment. You know how he yep. does the... Uh, he does like some elongations of, of the of the vowels that are specific to that kind of character, and I think that was taken into Pennywise, yeah, uh, just in the way that I, he spoke. Yeah, I'm not saying that that's a problem or anything. I thought it was actually really creepy that he did that, um, and then also the the hard pronunciations of su- of certain vowels of hard vowels like K or I don't know it. I forgot what he was saying but he was like a hard pronunciation maybe we all float down here because that's the line they chose to uh make the creepiest which is is fucking scary as fuck but um i think among uh besides i mean he's he's the star of the show right it is the he's the fucking worst it's horrible (laughs) uh he eats children for a living um because he's a he's a fucking clown that eats children. Um, but aside from that, I think the children the the children actors in this movie were amazing. I thought all of them were really great. Um, I disagree I, with all of them, but I thought uh, all of them were really funny. I thought <laughs> almost all the the one that I didn't really find that engaging was the. Um, the Jewish kid Stan. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> he was his, from a... his lines were a little bit stilted. That's true. He you're right, you're right. He sucked. He did kind of suck, you're right. But you can't I look, in terms of a child actor, um I think no, they did phenomenally. phenomenally. They did really really well. I think they, they nailed all... it with Eddie. Yeah. Uh, who you just know is going to grow up to be like a Jeremy Piven type actor. Mm-hmm. If he keeps acting. But um uh Finn Wolfhard Best name in show business, and also <laughs> great, uh, great reprising his role as Mike from uh, Stranger Things. Right. Um, just he, the, was he the one with the the, the glasses? Or yeah, no? he's the yeah, yeah, he's yeah. the guy who talks a mile a minute and has all the best lines because he, he did Stranger Things, lines. so he got to handpick his role. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. And I, I thought they did a really good job. Um, aside, And I, I like the girl, too. She was pretty good, I thought. Um, she was really, really great. Yeah. Um, and then also, I, I liked... Who was the nerdy kid who broke his arm? Forgot his name. That's Eddie. The, the, the character's name is Eddie. I don't know who the... Uh, uh, actor's name. The okay. actor's name. That, I mean, we'll, we'll find out, right? Uh, I'm sure they're going to get... Um, some more praise for this movie but um i thought it was really great overall um in terms of selection of actors i thought they're they're definitely all going to become great actors or burn out uh we'll find out um <laughs> we'll be let's, following let's them let's put that on, on them at this young age yep <laughs> yes of course especially with this type of movie um <laughs> but i thought they did a really good job of balancing of i mean this is this is something that all that a lot of horror movies struggle with um like ending ending the movie i thought is uh, for this particular movie there's going to be a second one so it was probably pretty easy for them to just end it and all they have to do is just end it the way they ended the first the first part in the original it um where they all take the vow to come back and finish him off he comes back um but i i thought it was paced really well i thought that's another thing um horror movies sometimes struggle with they they they're either all like all in on gore and horrible things and i i don't really like that i thought i thought i think i like something more like this movie where you get really horrifying scary scenes and there's a lot of tension and you know when something's gonna happen um due to sound cues and things like that um or if a 
child decides to walk alone by themselves <laughs> into a dark room um, <laughs> or to the basement. Um, but also I thought they, they mixed it up with these really actually pretty funny scenes um, from the, the kids just being kids, you know, living yeah. their summer lives. I thought that was exciting. I thought that was great. And I did, I did enjoy the fact that there was um, a lot of uh, mix between uh, the gore or the jump scares or just tension kind of gnawing yeah. at you. I thought there was a, it was a better button. I thought some of the costumes or like some of the costumes were a little, uh, a little more transparent than I would have thought. They like, they looked a little fake, you know? Like, mean, I thought Pennywise was amazing. Okay. Yeah. But I they, thought the the woman painting... Right, and, which was mostly CG, I thought. I didn't know it was a it was a prop or anything. Well, I don't know. Just the way that it can... Her and the some of the kids, whenever they had that, like, wet look, it looked a little too I unrealistic. See. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, the, the, the guy who was supposed to be the leper... Just because he's running. Oh yeah, that looked, that looked horrible. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't look that great. But overall, like Pennywise and his costume design and everything that went into creating his phys- from his physicality to just his ominous smile yes. was amazing. And I thought the most tense and scary part of the movie was the opening. But I didn't get lost in, throughout the movie, even though the most tense moment was at the very opening of the movie yeah, definitely. where you meet the character Pennywise and it's so gruesome what happens at the beginning <laughs> it's incredibly <laughs> gruesome and I am so happy yeah. that they were like yep we're going all out we're going balls deep into gruesomeness yeah I figure they, they would have to they have to either do it one one way or the other you know so I, I, I'd i rather them yeah I I did like that they, they were you know full on in on the gore but I also like I think it was done tastefully. I don't think it was like all, you know, blood everywhere splatter across the screen except for that obviously the one scene where um the girl I forget her name. I keep forgetting. Um where Beth. the blood just comes out of the, <laughs> the, I thought uh, that was a really uh, I, I not having seen the original movie or whatever but that I've happens. seen um <laughs> Carrie Yes. So I thought it oh, yeah, I thought was very Carrie-esque homage. That was my immediate thought. Um, exactly. I, I can't believe I didn't say that. Yeah, that's obviously, I thought, she must have studied Carrie, at least with, with her acting in that scene, I think. Um, also another um, Stephen King. Yes. Yeah, no coincidence there. Um, but I, I thought um, overall... But- I, yeah, sorry. the kid just going back to the meaning of Pennywise, just the kid crawling in his own pool of blood away, <laughs> and just the little clown hand coming out. It's so incredibly intense. Fucking clowns, man! I'm done with them. Did you hear the um, the Clown Association of America was very angry at this movie? <laughs> I w- I did not hear about that. They they got their their. I mean, they can't do anything about it. It's the movie but they're like we can't we can't stand for this movie it's ruining our sale our our business our livelihood <laughs> because obviously it is um uh, but you i don't know i mean i'm not saying there isn't any skill to being a clown obviously there is but i can't say i would want to go into that profession especially not now um, yeah <laughs> well, anyways, anyways, it was a very good movie it was very it. well shot i thought it did a really great blend of of what it needed to be mm-hmm. and, and it's, uh, i was i was happy it's doing it. well for a reason guys um i'd say if i had to give it a number score i'd give it an 8 out of 10 i really liked it yeah i was i i gave it an 8.3 or so an 83 cool. out of 100 yeah. awesome that's uh i'm glad you liked it cuz i i'm actually very excited for the second one um I think you should. Well, whatever. You should see it when when it comes out. But I was gonna say you should see the old one too. But <laughs> or at least the first part of the old one. Yeah, you should go back and see how. Campy I, I would it is. definitely do that. It's pretty campy. Um, but yeah, Avon, let me write this timestamp down. If you want to move on into the uh, topic of the show, 
Which from is being now. gripped by fear in the movie It to a people gripped by fear of reprisals from a dictator, we will move into our discussion of Turkmenistan. Yes. And Turkmenistan is a very little known country in Central Asia. Uh, its basic economy is based on the fact that it has a just giant stockpile of natural gas. All right. Um, and it Fantastic. uses that to kind of um, pump up its economy quite literally with gas. Um, it has, cool. <laughs> since its creation 25 years ago, after the fall of the Soviet Union, it has had two successive dictators, both who gave themselves their own titles. The previous dictator was named Sapar Murat Turkmen Bashi, which means like the leader of the Turkmen. Okay, that was not his name, or that was his actual Turkmen name? Turkmen Bashi is a um, titular name. It's something, it's a title that he was given by himself. Okay. And then the current president, uh, Gurban Guli Berdi Muhammadov, uh, he titled himself Arkadog, the protector. And even if it wasn't technically him that bestowed the name upon himself, it was given by the people, for instance. Yes. It was definitely himself who gave himself the name. Okay. Um, this, is a, uh, this is a man, the, the current president, is a man who erected a golden statue of, of himself on a horse on an iceberg-like uh, uh, like sh- shelf. Basically, and, and, and it's it's just designed to uh, show off himself uh, because the previous president also had a golden statue of himself, but not do, on a horse. Do you get the general feeling that the people feel the same way about him, or maybe it's the opposite? So, there there are a few different things that the, the president has actually done some interesting things in terms of trying to combat... Uh, drug usage and different things like this. So, under what the kind first... of drugs are being abused in Turkmenistan? So, because of its proximity to Afghanistan, it is a central route along the Golden Triangle. So, through Afghanistan into Russia and then through Europe, or okay. just into Russia. So, opioids are a big thing. Um, okay, okay. There's a lot of opium grown uh, in the region as poppies. Um, then there's just um, a number of whatever drugs that you could find grown in Afghanistan would all trans, uh, traverse through their marijuana, etc. Um, there all are right. still pockets of it that are used, but it's very high, highly restricted. And the current president, uh, Berdi Muhammadov, has made it very um, costly, let's say, okay. on, a, on a judicial basis to participate in the drug trade. So he has cleaned up the streets, and I felt very safe and very comfortable walking the streets. But you get the sense from a lot of the people that I was speaking to that if you're not in the upper echelons of the circles, it's not a great place to be. Because you'll you'll find that jobs are exceedingly hard to come by, especially in varied professions. Okay. And it's just a very repressive society. And the thing I hate most is this sign. Because posted up throughout the city are just random security guards whose only job is to do this. To and if the you're three listening people. to the audio, Avon is just crossing. I don't understand what this is, but uh, you. It's making you obviously an X understand. with your forearms, yeah. and this means no, you cannot come this way. Okay. And the main like there. So from what I observed in the city of Ashgabat, where I was based, is this the capital? By the, the way, I'm it not is sure. the capital. Okay. It holds the Guinness World Record for the most uh, white marble buildings. Wow. It has a Guinness World Record <laughs> for Rome. the largest <laughs> indoor Ferris wheel. Okay, the largest that's carpet, impressive. The largest now, because of the Olympic complex, the most square footage for water complex. Like okay. a swimming pool complex or something like that. And the largest representation of a horse. It used to also have... <laughs> That's an interesting thing. Okay. <laughs> it used to also have the world record for the tallest flagpole, but that was taken away by Saudi Arabia. Nice. Or the UAE, right. one of the two. Okay. <laughs> I'm interested. So Ashgabat is a 
small city uh, in terms of its population size, and it feels empty all the time. That's crazy. So it's it feels like a deserted town, almost. Yeah, because everyone's basically. inside. Well, yeah. So during the day, most people are inside, but it's too hot. The, the it is too hot. It got up to on average during the summer days, it's uh, upper nineties to over well over a hundred. Okay. And it's it's really hot, and it gets it's impossible to be outside. But at night, you might get some people out in the parks having picnics, etc. Um, it is a place where the people have to really um, hide a lot of their activities during the night because it's just hard to, to do anything during the day or, and it's easier to hide activities during the night from police or secret police. I see. That is that is a thing. Um, it's illegal You're to right. take photos of a lot of different pl- buildings and different places. Um, the president closes down streets so that he Whoa. can drive through them. And you're not even allowed to be in the sidewalk. I was in well, fact. Well, I figured if if uh, Trump were to drive down a street here in New York, it would probably be closed down, right? Would in people be able to walk on the sidewalk? I don't know. I don't know. Good I've, point. I've never would been they allowed to the... be in the lobby of a building? I'm not sure. I've never been in the vicinity of the president, except I, I did meet Bill Clinton once. Do you know that? I did not know that actually. Uh, I he was uh, this was after his presidency, but he was uh, just at a restaurant that I so happened to be at, and so he took pictures with all the children, and I was, there. <laughs> <laughs> and nice. so I shook his hand. Um, but yeah, that's a side awesome. note. <laughs> but I have no idea if, like, if, uh, if I mean, if President Trump was was being driven by the Secret Service, I assume they shut down a street that he was driving on but fair, that's fair enough assumption. shut down for traffic but yeah. then you can't be on the sidewalk and then at uh, other points where there is a possibility of the president d- driving down the street we weren't even allowed to be in the lobby of a building okay like we were told that we had to be yeah, ushered I... away from anything that faces the street all right so basically they don't want him to be assassinated or seen <laughs> or seen um and part of that is this uh, this attempt to create a, an air of mystery so nobody knows where the president is or what he's doing except for when he's at these kind of official functions uh-huh. it's this um attempt to create a mystique of character and personality and okay. it's a, it's odd to to say the least and it's very uh, restrictive when there's a lot of travel so the president generally travels twice during the day but then when the city gets filled with delegations from other places they also shut down streets based on the fact that uh, there was a a athletic event they also shut down streets so it was really hard to get around the city and not only that but even though they they shut down all these streets they put up a lot of security a lot of different places um, for the past couple of years, is what I was told, is that unless you were a resident of Ashgabat or the surrounding area, you weren't allowed to drive into the region without wow. special government permission. So there's restricted travel. And as a foreigner, you're not allowed to travel anywhere in the country unless it's with an official licensed, uh, like government approved, either travel agency or mission. And they say America has an immigration problem. God, I'm kidding. Uh, that yeah, sounds, and, and getting well, a visa is exceedingly difficult. They, they uh, allow thousands of people to enter. But I'm not talking tens of thousands. I'm talking like maybe 2,000 people to enter within their borders year. On, a, on a given year. Now, this yeah. year was special because of the Asian indoor, martial, and, indoor and martial arts games. But it was it's still highly restrictive in terms of entering and exiting to in order to enter into the country you go through three or four different passport control points but the th- same thing happens when you're attempting to leave the country you go through oh five God. to seven different points where your passport <laughs> is checked that's crazy jeez <laughs> well they need to make sure every single person is documented right so yeah, uh, but documented in terms of making sure that their own people are documented when they're there or leaving and making sure that they're highly regulated in terms of where they're going to and making sure they're coming back. 
Well, they have the right to protect their borders, Yvonne, right? <laughs> that's, uh, that's... No, I... <laughs> that understandable, sounds but... quite ridiculous. Well, I mean, it is understandable, one, because they they share... How many countries border uh, Turkmenistan? Something Isn't like three four, or four or five. It's four or five, right? Okay. But most of them are, are allies and, and different things. And the thing is that it's it's really not designed for any kind of threat that's incoming into the country. It's really designed to control the populace. Okay. And that's what a lot of the the different things are. And it's just coming from the... So this president is a little bit less cult of personality than the previous president, but that's not saying much. The previous okay. president would change changed days of the week, months based on the names of his sons, his his other like wow. something else. Like he changed the names of things That's as crazy. a personality <laughs> trait. He outlawed smoking <laughs> because he was attempting to quit himself. Okay. He I mean <laughs> outlawed any live performance. Because he was attempting to quit those too, or <laughs> because he said that uh, things like opera, ballet, theater were not um, masculine enough and representative of the Turkmen people. Wow. Um, and he did a lot of other things that were just um, the whims of one person without any kind of uh, respect or thought process to the good of people. So, in general. do you think? president trump would get along with this guy should he ever meet him i doubt he'll ever meet him <laughs> uh well president obama shook the hand of gurban guliberdi muhammadov uh they have okay. a photo uh with him and michelle obama uh so there was that and i think that based on the alignment of such a strong man that trump would probably have a very good uh, good relationship with him <laughs> that's funny He's a 60-year-old, 60-something-year-old dentist by trade who Whoa, was promoted in, to Minister of Health <laughs> to and then to President. <laughs> and wow. he's been elected with like 98% of the vote. And he removed term limits so that he can be president for life. Okay, so he was what... He got 98% of the popular vote and I'm assuming based off of what you've told me that maybe this election could possibly have been tampered with in some way i'm oh, guessing it's a, it's a sham of an election okay all right just a wild guess there okay so 98 percent means nothing to me <laughs> at this point. right um so well, given it's, that yeah and so what i was there to do was to aid in in putting on uh, some of these uh, opening and closing ceremonies, which were fantastic projects that really did display a lot of the beautiful history of Turkmenistan. For, for the Olympics, right? For the Asian Indoor oh, and Martial Asian Arts Indoor Games, martial arts. which is not even an Olympic qualifier. It's not? Nope. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, well. Yeah, uh... but it had some interesting things, like it had esports for the first time oh, that's in a cool. major sporting event. Um, it had some very interesting uh, examples of martial arts, including a lot of traditional Turkmen wrestling styles. What? Uh, Sorry. So Turkmenistan earned 243 okay. medals. For? Despite never winning an Olympic medal in its 25 year history. Whoa. That's crazy. Um, what, what sort of video games were they playing? I didn't science check science out science. the esports okay. at all, and they didn't show it on the TV, so okay. I don't actually know. It funnily, I mean, I'm, this is totally anecdotal, but uh, I, w I was my baby cousin was over today. I, I I was at a barbecue, and so I put the TV on for her um, to SpongeBob, and um, for commercials they had a commercial for an Overwatch tournament. I guess that's being held that aired on Nickelodeon or Disney or something. Um, and I was very intrigued. I mean, that's cool. I'm I'm all for esports, but uh, oh, so I can tell crazy. you the things that were. It was Dota two, Starcraft two, Hearthstone, and the King of Fighters. King of Fighters? What? <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, that's that. The, the one of those is not like the other. Let me put it that way. Um, <laughs> that's great. I'm glad King of Fighters is in there. I like that game. Um, but anyways, that's. So that's what you were there for, and you've set the scene in, in terms of the sort of general air that, you, or mystique for the, uh, the, 
the leader of Turkmenistan. Um, how how was your experience there? How how did you enjoy it for at all? Did you? Um, you were working a lot, so maybe work. you didn't have a lot of free time. But. I enjoyed my work a lot. I enjoyed the people I worked with a lot, um, and they were super international. So working with Turkmen people, with Azeris, uh, Italians, Russians, okay. uh, the whole gamut of people were really intriguing, really amazing to work with. Um, my experience with the Turkmen people are that they're very clever and intelligent people that are that really have an astounding way of um, working within the rules of their country to make them make a living for themselves. And That's they cool. uh, they understand for the most part that the the system in which they are currently residing is not the greatest uh doesn't have a lot of opportunity education isn't valued a lot of the things that um a lot of the jobs that they want to do from architecture to uh, a lot of different uh other trades uh or advanced degree having things aren't really as available as they should be and uh uh, so it makes it hard a lot of Everybody who can basically leaves the country to either get educated or go seek seek work. Now, that's not a lot of people, but that seems to be the case that as many people as can leave do leave unless you get hooked into the upper echelons of the ministry. And that's, it's, okay. it's, it's really an unfortunate way of structuring, uh, structuring something. Yeah. And it seems like as much as, as, as anyone is pushing for things to be better or good or different things, it's just kind of like when you have a system of governance where everyone is trying to appease one person who is micromanaging as much as he can possibly from uh, like uh, personally signing approvals for surgeries. Okay. Which is what the president does. That's weird. Uh, yeah. So from th- <laughs> small things like that, to any other kind of decision, there's a lot of micromanaging that happens. And so because of that system of structure where everybody has to report to one main person, everybody's attempting to touch different things. And so even if they're trying to make it the best possible, it always gets not corrupted, but switched and touched and moved. And there's so many levels of of prohibitive bureaucracy that it, it changes and manipulates things to break down. And so what was really interesting for me, uh, coming from the United States where we have Trump and all these troubles and different things, and everybody's worried that Trump will become a dictatorship. And moving from, from that worry and living in an actual dictatorship, this is right. the North Korea of Central Asia. Yes, of course. Of course. It, is, it is light, like night and day. And yeah, no, I can imagine. <laughs> I'm not saying that it it the United States doesn't have the possibility of sliding into these things because you see these reports where uh, there's statistically a lot of a lot even in the younger generations are more approving of military regimes, uh, removing barriers to multiple elections for the same person, so they could be elected to three, four, five, six terms as president. Mm-hmm. All of these things which would push towards a greater strength of the executive branch, uh, they're very scary because I've seen the results of what happens when the executive branch has unlimited power. Yes. It's it's crazy. It's obvious. No, obviously there's a reason why there's people don't want that to happen here, right? So um, that sounds very scary, but... Uh, and I, I, I definitely would never want to live in a society like that. So I'm Oh, also, the internet is kind of severely thing. restricted. Yes, I, I, I figured out. Uh, <laughs> not yeah. that I tried to contact you in any way, but uh, we were worried for a while. Um, but then you came back, so we're glad you're back here. Yeah, YouTube, Facebook, side. WhatsApp, Instagram, all blocked. Unless all you have blocked. a VPN. Well, then, you can, then you can get around the barriers. But okay. it's... It's a very restrictive country. Do you have any other questions, ideas, concerns? Um, well, I mean, I I don't I don't know. I don't even know what to ask about the the government. I mean, how many people live there? Do you know the population of the country? 
So the population in Turkmenistan is not that much. I don't even think a million people live in um, Ashgabat. Okay. Um, I, I, from what I understand, it's a very small country. So. Yeah, territorially, it's actually pretty large. Oh, but really? population-wise, it's small. I think it's something like okay. 30th uh, on the list of uh, countries by square footage. Okay, I didn't know that. Actually. But it is... It is exceedingly small in terms of the population. The other okay, thing so. is that uh, it borders the Caspian Sea, which is a, an outlet uh, in terms of gas uh, gas pipelines, etc. Uh, but it is also uh, a lot of desert, and there's not a lot of livable space. Well, that's a perfect. Sounds like the perfect place for a dictatorship, if I ever uh, picked one. You know, small population. They can't really go anywhere if they decide to walk or anything, uh, or even take a... I assume it would take a long time to drive anywhere, and, I, and if there's no infrastructure through this desert, um, which yeah. I also assume there isn't, so... So, um, the main yeah. <laughs> city, Ashgabat, is, uh, like, south-central of the country of Turkmenistan, and it's actually very close to the border with Iran. It's something like a probably okay. a 30-minute drive from Ashgabat oh, to Iran. Oh, okay, so Iran. it's very close to Iran. But that's not also, that's also a very very interesting part of the world as well. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, um, so the yeah, population of uh, the Iran. country no, rank Iran. in terms of population is 5.3 million. Okay. Um, and then the... New York City has more people than that. Right, but the <laughs> total square mileage is 54th in the world. Okay, so that's... So it well, goes from 110th in terms of population size to 54th, or 119th in terms of population size, according to the CIA World Factbook, okay. uh, to 54th in terms of total land size. So it's well, pretty great. desperate uh, disparate in terms of that, and it has, because of that, it, it should have a lot of territory, but because of the desert, it shrinks even more. And there's a lot of um, uh, there's a lot of restrictions in terms of movement. Okay. So there I are see. five main regions of uh, Turkmenistan: Ahal, Bakan, Dashagus, Libab, and Mari. Um, and basically, you're restricted. Uh, from what I could tell, you are restricted within your region based on your license plate and, and your living. State. And these are like states almost. So they're basically, almost like yeah. separate countries, even. They're they're kind of they're kind of that restrictive because of uh, the of, yeah. uh, travel between the places. It's like okay. a very highly guarded border between the the different state regions. Okay. Well, that's great. Um, well, let's move on. I don't know, unless you want to cover anything else on this this part of Turkmenistan. Um, yeah, let's the, move on. Oh, sorry, you have the, more? So the president is not only a fantastic uh, horse rider, he wins championships <laughs> all the time. Uh, he is a songsmith. He holds the Guinness Book of World Record for the... La uh, the largest amount of people singing a song in the round, okay. which they sang his song, One One, uh, nice. which is Forward Forward, My Beloved Turkmenistan. Beautiful song. So, well, you'll hear it later on. Um, it's yes. currently playing in the background. but um, it, it is a techno yeah. Euro pop hit. <laughs> I need to listen to this. I can't even hear it. Um, that's great. I I was most obviously well maybe not most obviously but uh, whenever I go to a new place I'm always very interested in the food and uh, things like that. That that's, is an excellent point. That's what I would love to hear about if you don't mind um, if you had enough time to get any local food or anything. You were there for a while, so yeah. <laughs> I gotta say, not the richest kitchen. Okay. What um, what kind of food do they do they serve? I don't even know. Like I literally have no there's idea. There's no what. good bread. Okay, that's that sucks. We'll start there's there. There's no like non type bread. I I, I mean it's there. Maybe. It's just not great. Okay. Uh, the bread that's there is not spectacular. It is okay. The one thing I say I say Turkmenistan the Turkmen kitchen has going for it is this thing called lavash, which is basically the Turkmen lavash. version of a tortilla. Okay, and that's really <laughs> that's good. Cool. 
Other than that, they the got bread. breads there are pretty stale, mediocre am at I best. Right? Stay away. They're, right? they're, they're stay away. Just a joke. Um, okay. Don't eat for the bread. majority. What we were eating was uh, canteen food, so they we okay. had local ingredients cooked by Italian chefs. <laughs> so throw all of that away. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, and then we'll go into what I ate in terms of local things. So local fruit, <laughs> phenomenal. Really? There what? are melons and watermelons, peaches. Uh, right. There um, are some strange figs. desert fruits that grow out. They're go- <laughs> they'll blow your mind, Julian. I'm peaches? Saying the, <laughs> really? The, yeah. The melons, the peaches, the okay. wa- the watermelons that I grow here. I figure you need a more humid environment for peaches, but I don't know anything it's, about agriculture. It's, I just know Stardew Valley. <laughs> I mean, they'll blow your mind. I mean, okay. I don't think that they're amazing. not the same form or shape as like a Georgia peach. They're Hell they're fine, different. Man. They're a lot fuzzier and they're smaller. Whoa. That's cool. Um, and they have slightly different tastes, but they're very sweet and delicious. That's great. The figs imported from Iran, I think, um, Ooh, but they might figs. be from Turkmenistan as well. Amazing. I didn't know I liked fresh figs that much. Oh my god, they're so... I think they're a lot better fresh, personally. Oh, they're fantastic. This is the way I prefer them. Either that or in a Newton. Yeah. Um, (laughs) And then the melons. I can't describe how delicious some of these melons are. Like, they're They're not... I assume you didn't just have watermelon, right? No, it's it's not like a watermelon. It's more like a cross between, like, a cantaloupe or a winter melon. Uh-huh. There's, there's all sorts of different types based on the regions in which they grow. They're so yep. sweet that they taste like vanilla ice cream, you know? Oh, man, that's amazing. It's They're incredible. And So they have good dessert. Yeah. Well, yes. Cool. Lunch, dessert, Base. breakfast. You can eat it whenever. Okay. And I did. I enjoyed it tremendously. <laughs> Uh, outside of that, there's a lot of um, Turkish style cuisine. Okay. And a lot of uh, standard things that you get in the is, post-Soviet is country. Is Turkmenistan on the Mediterranean? No, no. Turkmenistan no, no. is on the Caspian. The and Caspian kind of, Sea. Sorry. Yeah. I, I but they share up. a cultural history with Turk Turkey, so yeah. their their languages are very similar. Um, some of the origins of the kitchen are very similar. Okay. And and so you can get Baba some Ganoush. good good um, meat there. I would highly recommend some of the skewers, the lamb, lamb different things. and goat. Maybe. Yeah, it's those are really good. But in general, I would say this isn't the best developed kitchen, even in the region. I think the yeah, Uzbeki sucks. kitchen in the region is much uh, culturally richer uh, because it it is a stronger blend of those uh, Silk Road path. Um, places okay. they just had a much stronger cultural uh, significance, importance, and a longer history of being the center of that area. Okay. So, Uzbekistan is the crown of the kitchen in the area. Turkmenistan kind of lingers a little bit behind, even though it puts up some good things like some uh, samsa, which is kind of like a triangle shape or a different kind of shape, but um, it's a uh, basically f- bread. Uh, fried bread with uh, different stuffings inside. My favorite are with pumpkin or with um, some minced uh, lamb and onion. Real good. Okay. Uh, but it's really good in terms of, as opposed to other things that I'm eating, it's not the strongest kitchen. And I much appreciated coming back to eating food outside of Turkmenistan. <laughs> That's crazy. I I'm I am disappointed actually. I thought you were gonna have some pretty good food up there, but uh, I, I'm obviously wrong. Um, there were some things that were pretty good. I'm no, I'm, I'm saying, saying the fruit was to die for, but okay. the the main cooked kitchen was not the strongest. It's not the weakest in the world, but it's not the strongest. <laughs> yeah, middle of America might be the weakest. Um, <laughs> You've never had an Omaha steak. That's true. I've not been to Omaha ever, so you're right. Um, but I also like diner food, so maybe not. Um, I do so love diner food, too. When I, I went to Vermont, I got to <laughs> eat uh, in a diner that was a lunch car that was suspended kind of off of the side of a cliff. Oh, that's cool, man. Was Did you get good maple syrup there, I assume? You would assume correct, sir. Yeah, 
You should have did a shot of maple syrup. Once dated a girl who did a shot of maple syrup right in front of me. I, I take swigs made me of maple so syrup. hard. I'm kidding. Um, yeah, that was disgusting. Don't ever do that. <laughs> oh god. Um, well, cool, man. I'm. I think. Did well. Let's say. Do you think it was a success? A successful trip. You I good thought it was a successful trip in terms of the work you that were... we went there to do. It, uh-huh. The shows that we did were really pretty. Okay. Uh, we can include some links to kind of what they were. You might hear a very well-known voice to you doing the voiceovers. Oh, nice. That's um, awesome. Uh, but it was, put those out. it was a lot of really cool work, and I was really satisfied with being able to work with so many international people in an international setting and just work really hard on getting something done. And it was a it, big fucking show. It sounded like right up your alley to me. Um, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> it's like why <laughs> how could it have been more perfect i think that was that was a really good opportunity for you and i'm glad you did it thank you um, uh, yeah. thank you I, i'm proud most of you, importantly actually. thank you for all of the work that you put in on this end because oh, i know that you're that. or you're doing something great that's really up your alley uh <laughs> doing you too n- work in a national lab <laughs> and doing a lot of really intense research and yeah. still being able to manage all of the videos so my oh, intense <laughs> and very grateful uh thank you to that oh no problem i i had fun i had fun making them and uh it really wasn't that big a deal so i i like editing stuff for some crazy sadistical reason um <laughs> yeah that's it's really fun to me so i have fun um I should probably split it over two day, two nights when I edit, but I always <laughs> edit in one night because I really try to do it all in one night. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, Yvonne, do you have anything else to add on to Turk Medicine? Of course, we can always add more in, a ne- in another podcast. And if you ever have any questions about Turk Medicine or the like, anything, um, tweet at us or email at us. Um, all our information is the link in the description below, whether it be on YouTube or SoundCloud or iTunes. But Yvonne, take it away. Yeah, so so uh, please let us know if you have anything else to, to see. Um, I would say that Turkmenistan is very much least known for its alcohol production. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Again, I'm going to reiterate this. I don't know how you screw up vodka, but they do. Uh, <laughs> what did it taste like? It's It tasted it like... burned you? You take uh, tap water from Flint. Oh, okay. And, and then kind of try and purify that. Okay. And put, uh, put like, rubbing alcohol into it, blend oh. it together to reach 40 centigrade, like 40, uh, 80 proof, and then you put that in a bottle. Oh, God. That's it's disgusting. intensely disgusting, hard and harsh, <laughs> and it... Some of the worst hangers I've ever had. But A, because you're in the middle of a goddamn desert, so you're not drinking enough water, even if you try. And B, yeah. the just the shit that comes out of Turkmen alcohol production. They don't want it, and they they it comes through. It's clear. Thank you. Do I you... understand. Just, just... God. So do, anyway. did you meet anyone, any locals that like to drink or anything? Or Not as much as Europeans. <laughs> okay. So, well, maybe it's because of the alcohol quality. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Where there's good alcohol, there's definitely people who like to drink it. <laughs> so. In any case, you know what yeah. we really love to do at the end of every podcast? Uh, you, I don't know. We Put love to end in a segment... In a song that we call Hungover Radio. And this That's week, true. I get to bring the song to the podcast. I to don't care the, if it gets struck or whatever. Because I'm bringing you the, the, the sweet singing sensation straight from the terrific land of Turkmenistan. One, one. Forward, only forward, my beloved Turkmenistan. The song of IMAG 2017, Ashgabat. Uh, the song written... Produced, directed, um, played everything <laughs> by the president of Turkmenistan. Uh, I really hope you enjoy this sweet pop sensation, not unlike <laughs> the 70s uh, Euro uh, pop that we love so much growing up, Julian. Um, please yes. enjoy this, and 
remember to comment, subscribe, rate, and any review, anything to get us out there. Thank you so much for listening to my rant on Turkmenistan. My name is Ron. And I'm Julian. And also, I just wanted to say, if you wanted to send in your own music, please do so at gamingcomeover at gmail.com. We can uh, get in contact that way. And we'd love to help here in the community. Thank you.